In Spider-Man Homecoming, there's that great moment where you go in to hug Tony. Yeah. He reaches for the door. When I interviewed you at Lost City of Z, you said that was actually an improvised moment. Mm -hmm. At the end of Endgame, you guys get your hug. Yes. Did you think about that through line and kind of like, was that like was that going through your mind? Was that always planned to be that hug in that moment? No, it wasn't. We shot that scene as a reshoot while shooting Spider-Man Far From Home. So when we'd finished the European part of the shoot, everyone moved to New York and then I flew to Atlanta and shot that scene with Downey. Um, and it wasn't, a, I don't even know if it was originally a hug, um, but I think in the film I say, I thought we weren't there yet. I think so, I vaguely remember. Um, but yeah, it's amazing how a small little improvise can become a kind of full circle story in such a you know huge franchise. One of the most emotional moments in the history of movies and media was watching your character get dusted in Infinity War. And But now, one thing I want to know is, now that we know this trailer's out, we know this takes place after Endgame, we know that you're still in high school, um, do you have an idea of where you were when you were dusted? Zendaya? I have okay. no idea. I'm assuming it's where everyone else was. Yeah, I'm assuming <clears throat> uh, probably... In some stone, right? No, but like no. when we actually oh, got right. yeah. lit, when when actually, you imagine yeah. like 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 what would, where what do you think she was doing? When she was I'm like, assuming she was reading a book, somewhere. <laughs> just yeah. like in the corner doing something. I don't know. Maybe we were at school. We we're probably like watching TV or something. Yeah, you were probably playing Beast Slayer. Yeah, yeah. Beast Slayer on the computer, just yeah. building the Death Star and it drops. Yeah, uh, again, he what? just puts the Damn. last piece. <laughs> That's really funny. No. <laughs> was your line improvised? I don't feel too well, Mr. Stark. The line you said, like, was that was that? Uh, it was improvised to a degree. We we the scene was never meant to be as dramatic as it was. Uh, well, it was. It was never meant to be Tom as emotional. <laughs> but, <laughs> but basically, we we improvised a version of the scene which wasn't great, but it sparked an idea of we should have this embrace, oh. and I should turn to dust while he's holding me, and Jeez. and uh, and then the. There's a, a thing that we do when, if I'm doing a crying scene, I'll pick a phrase and I'll say it over and over again in my head and it makes me more emotional. What, what phrase? It could be anything. It could be, I'm so sorry. It could be, I love you. It could be, I don't want to go. So I think one of the reasons why I say, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, is because when I say something over and over again, it makes me feel more emotional. Um, so I think that's kind of where that line came from. One well, of my favorite moments in the movie is when uh, you send uh, Nick Fury to voicemail. Um, yeah. For each of you, who is the most famous person you've ever sent to voicemail that's called you? I accidentally sent Downey to voicemail <laughs> like a week ago. That's messed up. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, really? I can't top that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know any famous people, so... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> yeah. testing RDJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> said, did he call you out? Like, did he like go? No, he was cool about it. He FaceTimed me like at two o'clock in the morning, and I I cancelled the call, and I was like, I don't even know who that was. And then when I woke up in the morning, I was like, Oh my God, Downey, I'm so sorry. How can I help you? What do you need? That's so. Funny. And um, I he asked me for a video. John uh, John Favreau was winning some award, and and I guess I gave I I sent a video in that they played on the big screen, which was basically saying how amazing John Favreau is. Your handshake. Mm -hmm. um, in this movie, uh, I won't give, I won't spoil anything, but you kind of do it without even looking at each other. That's how. Yeah. Uh, is that something you came up with? Did you guys create that yourself? Is that like a friendly thing you guys do, or did you, was that written in that way? No, that was like made up. Well, it was written in there, but we yeah. made up the handshake because yeah. we started doing the scene, and then John Watts was like, "Okay, and now you do the handshake," and we were like, "Right, all oh, right, the handshake." Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. Here we go. And then we kind of just came up with it. And it worked really well. It, was, it came up with it. You guys had it since the first movie. Yeah. Yeah, but they were talking about in the first movie. Yeah. Oh, when we did I, that I thought scene. we were talking about, talking about this movie. Right? Yeah, no, we, no, yeah, no. Yeah, and then we bring like, it back in the second Yeah, I was like, you guys aren't. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> when, we, first, when we yeah. did it in the yeah. first yeah. film. Yeah. So in the trailer, it's revealed that you say you know Peter is Spider Man. And yes. that's in the trailer, which is crazy because it's a gigantic moment. But yeah. when you see the movie, you kind of realize the full scope of it. It's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, your character, to me, is such an emotional, amazing arc in this universe. And I was just curious filming that particular scene, actually saying, You're Spider Man. Like, yeah. Having that come out of your mouth. Like, was, yeah. was that like surreal just to say that? I mean, it's a gigantic moment. Yeah, I mean, a little bit, but also kind of like we kind of always knew that she knew. Yeah. You know, yeah. like even yeah. in the first movie where I like literally pop up out of nowhere for no reason. Yeah. 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 We kind of had a sense that she knew. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, when he's like staring at yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. staring. Yeah, yeah, that was funny. Exactly. Um, so, I don't know. It kind of like felt like we knew this was coming a little bit. So yeah. it felt nice to say, I'm like, finally. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, it, it's, it's, been, it's been great to kind of play the character because I think she's like she's very guarded and, and has like this defense mechanism. And you just kind of see Peter kind of like break down her wall a little bit. And um, yeah. I love her. She's amazing. Oh, Guys, thanks. thank you so much thanks, for this. Man. All right, so in Captain Marvel, we learn about how Nick Fury's eye 
uh, and how he got the scratch and mm -hmm. how Hawaii has the eye patch. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to ask you this at Captain Marvel, but I couldn't because it was kind of a spoiler. Prior to that moment, did uh -huh. you have another story there as to why his eye was out? Like, like filming all those MCU movies. Oh, yeah, there's always been another story. You know, they were always going, well, you know, he had a, a thing in the war or in one of his encounters, something happened, you know, but nobody ever said, it was a flick and scratch that got infected. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever flesh it out? Like, because like, I mean, you, obviously you're an amazing actor. Do you think about like, how Nick is affected by that, like emotionally, and and like kind of how it went down. Like I, mean, I would imagine you probably dealing with that over a bunch. That was of an iteration of the script before that. When I got the scratch, um, Talos gave me this salve, and I wouldn't use it because I was like, well, I'll get to it. And then my eye got infected, and you know, that was a whole thing. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things I love about this film, obviously there's so much secrecy, but at the end of Endgame, there was that brilliant Rooster Brothers shot as everybody was at that funeral. Mm -hmm. You clearly are there. Back, yeah. Yeah, what was that shot like to see filmed? Every single person there, and then you were on the deck, I believe, at the uh, at Yeah, the, on the porch. Talk about that shot, like what that was like to be there that day as somebody who's been a part of the MCU for as long <laughs> as you have. It was pretty amazing being there with everybody who was in the MCU at that point. You know, it was like the, the biggest base camp in the world. You know, I was surprised, but we shot way out in secret Georgia at an exclusive horse farm. It was a like beautiful setting that day. Everybody's around just kind of being there and hanging out, and then they kind of explain to us what's going on, and we're like, oh, okay, fine. And the shot starts way down there on the water, so by the time they get to the end, it's kind of like the first time people see me and Bree together. Oh, yeah. yeah exactly. Was Downey there just to be there at all? Well, he was there because that was a big, you know, Marvel class picture. Oh. You know, all the directors and all the people that had worked in Marvel films. So, so that cool. big old picture that they had. But, um, yeah, it was the first time, you know, Bree and I are actually on screen together as Captain Marvel and Nick Fury. Wow. And people were kind of wondering, wow, who was she? Because a lot <laughs> of characters didn't know already because she'd never been seen that she hadn't shot anything yeah. at that point. So that was new for them. It's crazy to sit here and talk to you because I have so many questions that I can't actually ask you, which is mm. a tough thing to do when we're here yeah, from you're doing a movie the film. Like this, yeah. But so that's kind of why I go backwards a little bit. But considering this is Sony, uh, and in July, Quentin's movie is coming out through Sony, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, is it? And I'm curious, as somebody who's a friend of Quentin Tarantino, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, everything, mm -hmm. can you call him up and go, I kind of want to see it. Can I come over and watch it? Like, are you do? Do you ever do that? Because to me, that's like I can't imagine like, what that would be like to go. He kind of doesn't have a cell phone. <laughs> you know? Really? You have, to, you have to call through like a filter of people to get to him to find that out. But no, I never did that. But yeah, I would be he good. usually calls me. <laughs> I, would, yeah. I would love to see you guys just hang out and talk movies. Yeah. Um, obviously, I bring up Pulp Fiction to you every time I see you. I have mm -hmm. my bad MF wallet. Um, I've never asked you this before, but I, I always wanted to talk to you about it. Like, but when the this, this scene when Marvin gets shot in the face in that in that movie, mm -hmm. what did they actually throw over you guys? Like, like, I would, like in your hair, like when you go to Quentin's house to get cleaned up, I was wondering what that was. Like, it was just like, like I don't know, I don't know what they used. It's it was, sticky blood and <laughs> it's syrup, basically. It's kind of, you know, because it's, it's, Sticky blood that has syrup. It's kind of sweet. It tastes sweet, and it's got oatmeal in it. So it would, you know, so we would have brains stuck in our hair and that kind of stuff. But in the original script, when he first turns around to speak to Marvin, he actually shoots him in the throat. So I'm bitched out because the blood's coming through his hands and it's squirting on us. I'm like, what the fuck did you do that? Why you do that? Da, 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 da. And he shoots him in the face to stop him from gagging on the bullet, because he's just <laughs> and we were having an argument about that, so he just finally shoots him in the face, and then he swears that it was a bump. But I always say he, he, he did it on purpose, because he was pissed that he didn't tell us that kid was in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, well thank you so much. All right. Great talking to you. You too, man. Good that seeing line you. Go, I'm, you've worked with some of the greatest directors of all time. Fincher, uh, you're talking Richard Kelly, with Donnie Darko. Um, as you, you've made so many movies in your career, as you sit, step into a film like this in a gigantic MCU universe, do yeah. you think back to things that those filmmakers, I know it's probably ingrained in you, you think about yeah. how you acted, but is there a specific thing you take from like a Fincher and Zodiac or a Richard Kelly and Donnie Darko that you still use in a movie like this? 
Well, I mean, if you think about Zodiac, what you realize is that David Fincher was prophetic to the Marvel Universe because essentially he has, he cast almost every single, not really? almost, but a lot of Buffalo, the- Buffalo, Downey. Yeah, 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 there are a lot of them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, no. I, yeah, there, there is stuff, I mean, over 25 years of making films, like you, there are certain things that just become second nature, things you know, so you become fluent in a language and- you can see how things are going from the opposite side of the camera mm-hmm. in a similar way that people can see from their side if they're filming you. So, um, but this was a whole other experience. This felt like, and it's part of the reason why I really wanted to do it was it's a, a world I really knew very little about. Mm-hmm. This Marvel shooting in a Marvel universe is like in the Marvel universe making these movies is a different process from any process I've ever been involved in. Yeah. There were a lot of things I kind of had to throw out. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was cool. It's what things you to throw out? Oh man, I mean, you know, you're 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 coming with up with ideas constantly. Actually, when I think about comparatively movies that similar to the process of this, I think about something like Donnie Darko because hmm. it 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 there are there are things in it that they, there are things in it actually that are, they they kind of are some there's some themes that are kind of cool yeah. that are similar. But I but I also really love that in that movie when we were making it, we were just throwing around ideas. There was something very structured and Richard Kelly written an amazing screenplay, but then we just started to riff. We had a good idea, we'd go here. Mm. And because you're living in a world like in the Marvel world that you can create stuff, someone has a better idea, you try it. Mm. And then that can lead you to somewhere else. So that just took me a little bit of time to kind of move and say, oh, I'm creating this character alongside John and alongside Kevin and Amy and, and everyone else. I mean, there are examples that we were shooting one day and we finished a scene um scene after spider-man and i fight off this uh, one of the elementary creatures and we're walking and i say you know let's let's get a drink and 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 we go and i don't know if it's in the movie anymore but tom after the second take said oh you know we could just fly out of here because i just thought oh we could walk you know i'd never been in a movie where you could fly (laughs) out of the scene you know and and then i start oh my god there's like a whole other so many other choices i can make yeah i mean can you imagine in any other movie i've been where i'm like i'm just gonna fly out of this scene the director's like um yeah with the movie that deals with twists and turns what is the key for an actor to not give away things in your performance that the audience will catch on to because on a second rewatch of this movie, John is saying that you're gonna pick up on things. So do you oh, yeah. consciously put things in for a second watch? Do you know you're, you're telling the audience? Yeah, I mean, things? I mean, you do, I think you, while we're doing things, we think, where can we put something before? Hmm. Um, particularly in this movie, like I think that that was the fun of it in a lot of ways. There are so many of those things in this movie, people are just gonna be like, you kinda have to, I would, I would get two tickets in a row to go back mm-hmm. immediately. Uh, cause when you get to the end, you're going to be like, wait, hold on. Um, so yes, the answer to that was that. And that's what I think was so cool about the character and playing the character was that 